Good morning. Pastor Bob Shetler of First Presbyterian Church of Gainesville here to say thank you for joining us this morning. At First Presbyterian, our purpose is to glorify God, make disciples of Jesus Christ, and meet human needs. I'm very pleased that you have chosen to take time from your busy schedule to worship the living Lord Jesus with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The Queen says Happy Christmas. So Happy Christmas. Yes. Happy Christmas. I would do that, but it would just be bad. I have to channel my inner Mary Poppins, which nobody really needs to see. And I forgot my umbrella. So let's just face the fact that would all go poorly. Good to have y'all here this morning at First Pres, where we seek to glorify God, make disciples of Jesus Christ, and meet human needs. Um, we actually printed the bulletin a little earlier than we normally do because of the holidays, and this following announcement did not make it, so look for it next week as well as a flower up here. Um, Nora Bell Van Sickle was born on December 22nd uh, to parents Carl and Talana Van Sickle. She has two older siblings, a brother CJ and a sister Lillian, and her grandparents are John and Chris Van Sickle. So we just invite y'all to pray for this family with this new addition and new routines and um, I'm sure all the rest that any young family could ever enjoy. So just be praying for them, but we are very delighted to announce uh, the birth of this uh, new little girl. I um, also want to draw your attention to the back of the worship guide, the bulletin, especially this bottom area here. Uh, just kind of gives a list of when everything will start back up at the church. Uh, Kids for God, Youth Connection, Logos, College Cafe. Uh, just be aware of those dates. Go ahead and put them in your calendar if they apply to you. And um, I'm really glad to have you all here with us as we worship Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. Let us continue to turn our hearts to the Lord. Let us now stand for our call to worship and remain standing for our opening hymn, hymn number 22, Angels from the Realms of Glory. O children of the living God, what is your Father's greatest desire for you? And how would you show this love? By remembering Him at all times. By cultivating thankfulness for His many blessings and trusting His good providence for the meeting of our needs. By loving all whose lives intersect our own. By choosing to serve rather than to be served. To be wounded rather than to wound and by bearing patiently with the failings of others, extending the same kindness, mercy, and compassion that God in Christ has so graciously offered us.
Let us now enter into a time of confession and pardon. Mighty God, through Jesus Christ, you adopt us as your beloved children, but you have lived as those who belong to this world and not to you. We seek our fulfillment in material things. We despair in the face of the world's problems. We try to control our lives instead of committing them to you. Free us from the slavery of our sin to the joyful inheritance of your love so that the gift of Jesus Christ, which brought us new hearts and new life, will lead us to fill the world with your love. Lord, forgive us and hear us as we confess our sins to you. Please join me. Loving God, thank you for caring for us so we fully that cause us all things to work out for our good. Still we worry whether all shall be well for us. Instead of trusting your continuing care for us, we become anxious and we fret over how to take care of our own selves as well as all that we hold dear. Forgive our lack of trust in you and by your spirit Rekindle our faith in you to the honor and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, O Lord, transform us as we continue our confession in silence. O children of God, casting your cares upon his strong shoulders, now surrender your own agendas for this day, and instead be led by the workings of his Holy Spirit. Open our eyes and our hearts, O Lord, to your word and to your truth. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Please let us pray our prayer of illumination. As you led Simeon to embrace the infant Jesus, guide us, Holy Spirit. 
by your gracious light that we may welcome your saving word. May our hearts be changed by, for, and through Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's uh, gospel reading is from Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 25 through 30. In this gospel, Matthew allows us to hear a prayer, a prayer of Jesus, where Jesus, as the Son, reminds us that we must come to the Father like a child, as we do and as we surrender to Christ's loving yoke and wait for him to fulfill his perfect plan, we will experience his blessing and his perfect rest. Please hear the word of the Lord. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. This time we'd like to invite our young disciples to come forward. Afterwards, children will sit with their families. Good morning. All right, everybody grab a seat. There's plenty of room. All right. You guys up here, everybody in the congregation, will you take just a second and bow your head for me and close your eyes and just rest. Take a couple deep breaths in and out. Let your shoulders drop. Rest from the stress of the holidays, the stress of travel. Rest from the excitement of Christmas, the fun of visiting family and friends. Just rest. All right, open your eyes for me. Now I have a question. How many of you guys take naps? Do you guys take naps? Do you guys take naps? <laughs> me too. Um, now we all need rest, and God knows that. God, from the very beginning, set an example for us. God, the almighty creator of the universe, took six days to create things and then chose on the seventh day to rest. He wants us to do the same thing for rest, for peace, for restoration. You guys bow your heads with me. Please repeat after me. Dear God, please give us the rest we need. Amen.
Today's Old Testament reading is from Joel, chapter 2, verses 21 through 26. Please hear the word of the Lord. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green, the tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and vine give their full yield. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Once again, good morning. Happy New Year, or pretty close to New Year. Let's see, I should have done this before. i got to do some quick calculations. I think we officially have 37 hours, 36 hours, to finish any resolutions that we made last year. So, if you don't have anything to do over the next day and a half, just go back to last December 30th, 31st, January 1-2, Find that list of things that you resolved to do in 2018 and get to it. You still have time. No, it's a blessing to be with you this morning. Um, And whether you're attending here in our service, you might be watching us uh, or listening to us via the internet. Uh, You might be watching us a week delayed on TV. Uh, Whatever form that you decide and can join with us as a family of faith, we are glad to have you with us. My name is Fred Lundy, and I help with the young adult ministry here at First Pres. Uh, Dr. Bob and Vicki are both on time away, and I have the awesome privilege of opening God's Word today with each of you. If you've been with us the past few years on the Sunday between Christmas and the first Sunday of January, uh, normally I'm the guy that's kind of up here. It's one of the cool roles I get to play, and I, I really enjoy it. Every year I look forward to it. And in the past, what I typically do is I I tell you kind of the word that I'm going to focus on that next year. Um, Usually, um, it's one or two words. It's about all I can handle for a resolution. Um, I want it to at least last to like, I don't know, the 14th or 15th of January. So I have figured out if I choose one word, I have a shot of making it through mid-January before I forget what it is. Um, This year, though, I actually want to do things a little different. This year... What we're actually going to do, or what I'd like for us to do, is kind of look back before we look forward. So in the end, the Lord might lead you to a word, or a phrase, or a thought. But I hope He does that by allowing us time, which we'll have later on, to kind of think through 2018. And what the Lord has done in and for each of us. We're going to start actually by looking back just a few days. To the last time we were together on Christmas Eve, Dr. Bob read a poem by Howard Thurman that I want to read again, and it goes like this. I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all the sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days. Candles of grace to ease heavy burdens. Candles of love to inspire all my living. Candles that will burn all year long. To me, one of the sweetest times we share together as a family of faith each year is that time at the end of our Christmas Eve service as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night. The congregation If you were here, you remember, became filled with the glow of these candles that we each held. The end of the song, we last stanza, we actually lift our candles high, both to signify that the Lord is the light of the world, but also to signify the fact that we worship Him. 
this babe that we celebrate born in a manger. For me, it's one of those times whenever I, I wish everything would just kind of pause. You know, like those movie scenes where the actor, the lead, he, he or she sits there, and in their vision, everything kind of slows down. And it gives them a heightened awareness to take in everything that's going on around them. You see, while there's a lot of joy in that service and much joy in the celebration of the Christ child born to us, as I've grown older in life, I've become more aware that sometimes the flickering of those candle flames can remind us of the flickering of our own lives. As we look at these or these or the ones in the window and that we watch, they have a certain motion that they go through. Personally and individually, in our own lives, I think it's times like that that we are made aware of our own silent nights. We become aware of both times when we quaked and times whenever we felt the fullness of the redeeming grace of Christ fresh and anew. I think it's a very necessary practice for us as believers, as Christ followers, to spend time looking back with hopes that we will develop a sense of spiritual hindsight, a spiritual sense of clear vision, so that as we look back, we are clear as we look and move forward. It's in this viewpoint that we will move forward in our time together today. So for each of you, as you look back, if your recollections of 2018 are great ones, full of joy and excitement, find time in these next few days to be before the Lord telling Him thanks. Thanks. Thanks be to God. But maybe you look back and your memories of 2018 are less joy-filled. My hope for us is that our time together today will help us realize that even in those times, He still is Emmanuel. He still is God with us. The prophet Jeremiah reminds us in chapter 29, verse 11 and following of this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore. So in your life, in the life of your family, if 2018 ends on a high note because it was one where there was new life, Maybe there was a pregnancy and a child was born or, or new families came about, engagements or marriages. Perhaps this was the year that you bought a new home or a first home together as a family. Careers might have changed and after working in one level, God allowed you to, to move to where you had been trying to get to for years. Maybe this year you celebrated graduation from college. Personally, or somebody else. If this year was a good year, or this year was just one of those years you just want to put in the rearview mirror and drive away from, not even looking back. My hope for each of us today is that we will join and echo the Psalmter from his 30, 136 song. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great things, to him who by understanding made the heavens, to him who spread out the earth above the waters, to him who made the great lights, to him who made the sun to rule over the day, to him who made the moon and stars to rule over the night, it is He who remembered us in our lowest state. It is He 
who rescued us from our foes. It is He who gives food to all flesh. Give thanks to the God of heaven for His steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray. Father, today, may our hearts be open to Your Spirit's leading. Lord, may the words that are said and the words that are heard go through the wisdom of Your Holy Spirit so that, Father, we are reminded of Your great love for us so that we know we experience We live in the fullness of what it means to have relationship with You, Almighty God, through Your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, may our time together be sweet to You. May our ears be attentive. May our hearts be faithful. May our eyes be focused on Your revelation for us. We pray these things in the name of Your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In each passage we read today, both the one from Matthew and the one from Joel, there's a word I want to focus on from each. From Matthew, that word is rest. It's from verse 28 and 29. And from Joel, the word is restore from verse 25. When we look at these two words and study them, we we get a little clearer understanding of what the author intended as he wrote. Rest comes from the Greek anapau. And it means to give rest, to give intermission from labor, to refresh, to take your ease, to revive, to remain quiet. That Greek word is pao, and it literally means to cease or to stop. In its basic sense, it is freedom from work or activity. And the first occurrence we get of this word in God's Scripture is actually all the way back in Genesis 2-2, when God Himself, after six days of creating, rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had done. The day of rest, which occurred right after He, God, saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. You see, it was here in the very beginning when Almighty God performed His final act of creation week. And as the sixth day darkened with the onset of dusk, this day, unlike the others that ended good, this day, the one that ended very good, the grand creator sets the tone for time to follow and originates for us the idea of both Sabbath and the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is time daily and weekly when we are called to take our ease and be refreshed. It's a day when we are to follow His leadership for us and be faithful to His call and demonstration for us. Work on six, be faithful and trusting of Him with one. Give Him ample space and ample time to show us that He is Very good. And we do this so that we can experience Him restoring us. So from Joel, the word restore is used, and it literally means to pay back. It comes from the Hebrew word shalim, which means to be completed or ready, to remain healthy or unharmed, to keep peace, to finish or carry out, to deliver up, or to make peace. The word restore carries with it the idea of being finished or fulfilled. It's actually from the same root that we get the word shalom, which means God's perfect peace. A synonym, if it helps for renew, goes with the concept of putting or bringing back into existence or use, or to bring or put back into a former or original state. And the reason I wanted to look at these definitions is I believe that when we study them, we understand that spiritually, this kind of restoration is one that is total. 
in the fact that it is a kind of restoration that only God can provide. You see, like true rest, its origins are with God. And therefore, it is experienced in its utmost only whenever we are in personal relationship with Him. It's in the context of these words together that we understand the following. We have a responsibility, as the Scripture indicates, and that is that we have to be involved in rest. But God has a responsibility too. And that's in the fact that ultimately restoration, real restoration, can only be done with His mighty hand. You see, just as we have to be willing participants for rest to occur, restoration only happens when it comes from Almighty God. And in both, we find, we find this holy God who seeks to help us understand that He has a perfect role to play and a perfect desire for each of us. So regardless of how 2018 went for you, Regardless of how your mind remembers it now and remember it for years to future, please know that the Lord desires the same thing from each of us. He desires for us to have lives characterized by resting in Him and being restored by Him. This is, call, this is His call for each of us as individuals and us together as a family of faith. And it's best done, I think, whenever we spend time with Him in prayer. When we meditate on His Word and allow it to read us as we read it. As I looked for a description of how these words come together, I found it in a song titled, God Rested by Andrew Peterson. In the song, Peterson is actually describing that fateful weekend after the crucifixion when Christ was removed from the cross and laid in the tomb, and the lyrics are as follows. So they took his body down, the man who said he was the resurrection and the life, was lifeless on the ground now. The sky was red, his blood along the blade of night. And as Sabbath fell, they shrouded him in linen. They dressed him like a wound. The rich man and the woman they laid him in the tomb. Six days shall you labor. The seventh is the Lord's. In six he made the earth and all the heavens. But he rested on the seventh. God rested. He said that it was finished. And the seventh day he blessed it. God rested. You see, it's in this concept of holy rest and complete restoration I hope we all look at last year and look forward to the year to come. The end of both of these weeks, both the one recorded in Genesis 1 and in John 12 through 19, God Almighty rested. When He, for the first time in eternity, was separated and saw His only begotten Son taken into a tomb, and there was evening and there was morning, the Sabbath day. God rested. And in both of these events, He modeled for us how our lives should be. So for me, and perhaps for you, when you think you are too busy to rest, and I think I am too busy to rest, may we remember the work of God on the six days of creation and what He did on the seventh. When I think my week has been great and everything is going well and I do not need to rest. May I remember what God did after five consecutive good days. Followed by one very good day. And rest. And whenever I think my life cannot get any worse or any more in disarray. And there is no rest to be had. May I remember what God did at the end of the Holy Week and rest. Peterson ends his song as follows. Six days you shall labor, the seventh is the Lord's, and six he made the earth and all the heavens. 
but he rested on the seventh. God rested. He worked till it was finished, and the seventh day he blessed it. He said that it was good, and the seventh day he blessed it. God rested. The sun went down. The Sabbath faded. The holy day was done, and all creation waited. And in that moment, God blessed it, and he rested. Like creation, the question I would like us to each ask today is, what are we waiting for? How on this Sabbath do we need to enter God's rest? Is there anything in your life that you wish God would restore? So my hope for us this day, next year, every day to come throughout the days that He gives us is that we will be faithful to the call of God and of Christ and be a people of prayer so that our church is a house of prayer. Because it's in prayer that we find rest and it's through prayer that God can restore. And that's how we're going to end today. I'm going to guide you through the scripture that we read. I'm going to give you some thoughts that will help you pray. I'll say the words now, O Lord, hear us as we continue to pray in silence and we will have silence. So if 2018 was a banner year, fill this time praising Lord for what he did. 2018 was a little more challenging. Use this time to rest in Him, to come before His throne of grace and mercy and love, to call out to Him and know that He will hear you. So if you will, please join me in prayer. Matthew eleven twenty five 25 through 26. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. So in these moments, let us thank the Lord for his creation. Let us thank the Lord for creating us. Let us thank the Lord for loving us with the love of a perfect parent, one who is patient and who pursues us wholeheartedly. And let us ask the Lord to reveal himself to each of us so that in his grace, he draws us to himself. Now, O Lord, hear us as we continue to pray in silence. Lord, hear our prayer. Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. In these moments, thank the Lord for being involved in your daily life. And throughout the day, and if you have a relationship with Christ, thank Him for revealing Himself to you. If you do not know Christ personally, or perhaps know of someone who you believe does not have a relationship with Christ, pray for that person specifically. That the Lord would reveal Himself and so that spiritual eyes and spiritual ears would be open to Him. Now, O oh Lord, Hear us as we continue to pray in silence.
Lord, hear our prayer. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In these moments, may we rest in the Lord. May we learn from Him. May we lay our burdens at His feet and upon Him and ask Him for help. And as we rest in Him, may we thank Him for easing things and lightening our burden. And may we rejoice in what He has and is doing in and through and for us. Now, O Lord, hear us as we continue to pray in silence. For he has done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and the vine give their full yield. Be glad, be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty, you shall be satisfied, you shall praise the name of the Lord your God, for he has dealt wondrously with you. Lord, it is true that you have done great things. May we remember when we are fearful, when we are lacking, when we are hopeless, to lean into you, to come to you, to ask you to grow our faith in you and to cry out to you as the great, holy, and perfect restorer. For Lord, you have done great things so that when times are glad, when we rejoice, when things are great, and when we are abundantly blessed, when our cup runneth over, may we continually give thanks to you. May we be satisfied in you. May we praise your name and realize it is you who has dealt wondrously with us. Lord, you have done great things because, Lord, you are great. May we be those whose very hearts are being transformed by your Holy Spirit. May we be people who rest in you. And when we experience your restoration, Lord, may our lips be unable to contain it from those we meet. May our lives be ones where our voices cry out and our bodies live out that you alone, God, are the one who deserves all the glory. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us rest. May we be restored in you. We pray it in your Son's name. Amen. Let us now stand as we affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary. Was suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I always encourage y'all to be aware of the part of our bulletin where we um, list those with prayer needs, um, which this week is on the same back side as the announcements here. I um, also want to draw your attention to the top left. Um, just be in prayer for our Congregational nom- Nominating Committee uh, as they will be meeting and um, just spending a lot of time themselves in prayer, looking for wisdom and direction um, as they move forward to forming a Pastor Nominating Committee. Um, and just be in prayer for each other. Um, let others know of ways you can pray for each other and, and then commit to do so. Um, Also, just want to think of those who are traveling this time of year. It's a busy travel time, so pray for them to be safe. Um, In a minute, we're going to receive our um, offering and um, just enjoy that time of worship, time whenever we can uh, give back financially from what the Lord has given us. If during that time, on the end of the bulletin, there's a little black folder like this, if you would just put your name in it. If uh, you'd like to get information from our church and aren't, um, we send a couple of emails a week. Um, we keep it, um, but we do use it to make people aware of what we have going on, prayer needs and otherwise. So feel free to use that. Um, at this time, let us pray and then continue our worship through giving. Join me. So Lord, we thank you for the many opportunities you give us to give back to you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have now to give financially back. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities we will have throughout the day today and week ahead to honor you and to worship you. Father, may we um, not be so busy we miss um, how your Holy Spirit is is leading us to be involved in things of grand importance to you. Lord, may we not minimize... um, both what we give now and what we give in in lieu of time and what we give, Lord, in conversation and just being present with other people. So, Lord, thanks for allowing us to be involved in your good work. May we not squander the opportunity, but may we give abundantly with joy. And we pray it all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I come, then invited by your Son, in the stillness I can hear Jesus calling me near. Come to me, all you weary and worn, come all you heavy My beloved child, come away for a while, and you shall find rest for your soul. You shall find rest for your soul.
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Father, we come before you and we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the day that you have made, for we know that we can rejoice and be glad in it. We know that we can be glad in it because you give us a day to rest to find a sense of peace that comes only from you, a peace and rest that surpasses all understanding. You remind us, Lord, that it's not just sitting and doing nothing, but it's giving you thanks and praise all the day long. For your word in itself, it reminds us to keep the Sabbath holy. For six days we shall labor in all of work. But in the seventh day, the Sabbath, the Lord our God, you declared for us to rest in you. So Father, may we find that rest like no other. So Father, we remember your word and we remember the words in which your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you again for joining us this morning. I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, Bob Bailey to come down and Ray to come down. Uh, They're our elders. Uh, We have a a group of men and women in our church who are the spiritual leaders of our family. Um, And per the Bible, 
uh, teaching. We call them elders. Um, most of them are pretty wise cats, so we're grateful for them. Um, and then Scott is actually going to go over to the door to go to Gordon Hall. Um, so as we conclude today, um, I, I, do, I, do, I do hope we can all spend some time maybe in 2019 resting a little more in the Lord. I really do. I hope I do. So if you need to, too, may you, if you're, like I said, or I think I said at the first service, if you're great at it, um, give me your number on the way out so we can grab coffee or something, because I would really like to learn from you, um, because I'm not great at it all the time. Again, let me thank you for joining us in our worship today at First Presbyterian Church of Gainesville. I invite you to come on Sunday and join us personally at 1055 in our sanctuary at 106 Southwest 3rd Street in downtown Gainesville. We have other ways to be involved in the ministry offerings of First Presbyterian Church, children's ministry, music ministry, a ministry with college students. You can reach us at 352-378-1527 or on the web at 1stpc.org.